Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Pig in a Pumpkin. That's right, I've always wanted to cook a pig in a pumpkin, but I could never find a pumpkin big enough or a pig small enough. So I finally just settled for cooking part of a pig in a pumpkin, and the results were almost as delicious as they were beautiful, since this really was one of the more visually stunning things I've made in a long time. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I did was cut up some pork shoulder, which is often sold in butcher shops as pork butt. And why that is is not nearly as entertaining of a story as you'd think. But anyway, I have about four pounds of pork shoulder here, which were formerly sold as two pork roasts, which is why they kind of have these weird flaps, since the butchers kind of tucked those in and then tied them up to make them look like one solid piece. But anyway, notwithstanding a couple fatty flaps, I went ahead and cut that into nice large chunks. And then once that was set, I transferred it into a large mixing bowl and proceeded to season it with a whole bunch of kosher salt. And yes, we do need that much. I also tossed in some freshly ground black pepper, and of course a little shake of cayenne, as well as a little bit of dry thyme. I hadn't planned on that, but there was like a half teaspoon left in the bottom of one of my jars. So I figured, what the heck, let's throw that in. And then I followed that with something I did plan on adding, which was some crushed fennel seed. And then I finished up with a couple fresh items, including some freshly chopped rosemary and some sliced shallots. And then I went ahead and gave that a very thorough mixing, and by the way, of course, garlic and or onions would have worked in place of the shallots. Or you could have used all three. All right, that kind of stuff's up to you. I mean, you are, after all, the chairman of the board for your pork stuff gourd. And this really is just a techniques video, so feel free to season this any way you want. And then once that's all mixed up, I guess we could move to the browning stage. But I actually decided to cover mine in parchment paper and pop it in the fridge overnight, which will give our seasonings more time to penetrate that meat a little more deeply. So I went ahead and covered that and popped it in the fridge overnight, at which point we'll pull that out. And then before we brown it, I'm going to sprinkle over a couple tablespoons of flour. And besides helping the meat develop a beautiful crust as we brown this, I also thought that starch would help thicken up our cooking liquids, which we would then use for a sauce later. And yes, I probably should have broken up that lump of meat first and then sprinkled that over. But that's fine. We'll just take the tongs and give it a mix, until each piece is sort of semi-evenly coated. And then once my pork chunks were floured, I went ahead and browned up this meat over medium high heat and a little bit of olive oil. All right, you don't need too much because remember, fat's gonna render out as you cook these. And I browned that very thoroughly on both sides. And I should mention I did that in two batches so as not to crowd the pan. And then besides browning up all our meat, the only other thing we're gonna have to prep is our pumpkin. And we'll do that by first cutting off the top. And to do that, we will plunge our knife in very carefully at a 45 degree angle two or three inches away from the stem. And we're gonna go very slowly, just cutting around about an inch at a time. And the reason we wanna go in at a 45 degree angle is because if you cut straight down, that top is just gonna fall straight down through. Oh, and I should mention, this is not a regular ornamental pumpkin that you make your jack-o'-lanterns out of. Okay, these kind are commonly referred to as pie pumpkins since they have more and sweeter flesh. But anyway, we'll cut like that all the way around and we'll remove what's basically gonna be our lid. And of course, we're gonna trim off the seeds and any of that sticky orange hair, or whatever those fibers are called. And of course, we're also gonna to have to scrape out the inside nice and clean, using a large spoon or a regular spoon, or what I really used between shots, which was an ice cream scooper. And that did take a few minutes, and was by far the hardest and most annoying part of the whole operation. But eventually, I got that nicely scooped out. And when done, it should look a little something like this. And then what we'll do once our pumpkin is sand seeds is place that into some kind of baking dish or pan. And as you can see, I did put a little piece of parchment paper in there. Although to be honest with you, I'm not exactly sure why. But anyway, once I had my pumpkin panned, I proceeded to fill that with my browned meat. And I was not sure it was all gonna fit because I just guessed at the amounts. But as luck would have it, it actually all fit in perfectly, including any of those shallots and scraps from the pan, as well as of course, any accumulated juices. If you throw those away, we can't be friends. And then after that, I finished up by pouring in my braising liquid, which was a couple cups of hard cider, or as my European friends call it, cider, because apparently it always has alcohol in it over there, as so many things do. So I poured in a couple cups of that, and then pressed on the top, which did not quite fit, but close enough. And I figured as this roasted, 
and the meat shrunk up a little, that lid would settle down. And then once I had that all situated to my liking, I went ahead and transferred that into a 350 degree oven for almost four hours, or until it looked like one of the greatest things I've ever seen come out of an oven. I mean, come on, check that out. And yes, of course, as that was roasting, I was checking it with a skewer, which I'm just pretending to do here. But do not, under any circumstances, stop cooking this until when you test it with a skewer or a knife or a fork. That meat is very, very tender. And then what I did was decide to let this rest a little bit. And while it was sitting, I decided to paint the outside with the rendered fat. Because even though we don't think something could look any better, we always want to check. So I brushed some of that hot melted pork fat all over. And believe it or not, it became even more gorgeous. And then I didn't film it, but I did spoon off the rest of the fat and reserved any of the juices in the bottom so I could mix that with the juices inside the pumpkin to use that as a sauce later. And then just because I thought it would look nice for the pictures, I surrounded that with some Brussels sprouts I'd sauteed in butter. And once that was set, I went ahead and took a few pictures, like a hundred or so. And it took a while, but eventually I got tired of looking at it. And I pulled off the lid so I could serve some up and see how it tasted. So I pulled out some pork, which smelled absolutely amazing. And I also cut out a serving of the pumpkin, which if you've never had before, actually tastes a lot like butternut squash. And I went ahead and plated some up with some nice buttery mashed potatoes. And then I finished it off by spooning over some of the cooking liquids after skimming off some of the fat. And I will admit it was not the most beautiful sauce because it had a bunch of particles from the cooked pumpkin that sort of made it look a little grainy which is why I decided to finish this by distracting everybody with a nice sprinkling of freshly chopped Italian parsley. And I will give you more info about the sauce in the blog post. But anyway, I finished up with some parsley. And that's it. My pig in a pumpkin was ready to try. And as far as the cooking method goes, I thought this was very, very successful. And although it was very subtle, the pork did pick up a little touch of sweetness. And on the other hand, the pumpkin really picked up a ton of that pork flavor. Mostly thanks to all those sausage-like seasonings. And by the way, if we have any kids watching, don't eat things off the tip of a knife. Unless you're playing pirate, then it's okay. So to summarize, the pork was amazing, the pumpkin was amazing, the sauce was pretty amazing. Although, like I said, I'm going to give you a little advice about that in the blog post. I probably could have poured in a little more cider, so I would have had a little more. But anyway, all in all, an amazingly successful experiment. And visually, just a total seasonally appropriate showstopper. In fact, I thought this looked so incredible that even if you're not going to use this technique to braise pork, I think this is probably how you should cook your stuffing for Thanksgiving. I mean, not that grandma's casserole dish is not impressive, but imagine walking to the table with this. Or if you don't get some oohs and ahs with this, you might need to be thinking about a different guest list. But anyway, whether you're going to use part of a pig or some other savory stuffable substitute, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.